everybody, my name's Liz, I'm the Baker That Sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you are a subscriber. As always, it's really lovely to have you here as I share my sewing journey. So welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a long overdue question and answer video. So ages ago, like I think it might, might be a couple of months ago, I said that I was going to film a Q&A video so you could ask me anything, anything to do with sewing, baking, like anything to do with my life. And I would decide whether I felt comfortable answering the questions. Um, I have got my notebook in front of me with loads of questions. And I think what I'm gonna do, because I've got so many questions questions I'm going to split it in half so it's going to be a part one and a part two so I'm going to go up to question 15 and then part two will be the second half of the questions I've got any questions that people ask me written down in front of me and I'm just going to go through them and answer them one at a time um, once I've answered the questions um, you've obviously watched this video if there is anything else you think of I'm more than happy to answer more questions at a later date um, before I dive into the questions, I'll let you know what I'm wearing. And I'm wearing one of my many um, Friday Pattern Company sagebrush tops. And this is in a really lovely sort of lightweight. I can't remember what the type of fabric was. I think it was just described as a cotton, but it's really lightweight. And it's got all of these wild cats all over it. I absolutely love the sagebrush. It's got this gorgeous ruffle. I love the, the um, sleeve detail. It's got elastic at the end. I've just got it tucked into my favourite jeans ever, which is the Anna Allen Persephone pants. They are a bit creased because I've been sat down. And then the sagebrush has got a tie at the back and the neckline is finished with bias binding. It's one of my favourite blouse patterns. I can't remember how many I've got, but I've got tons and tons. So that is what I'm wearing. Where possible, I'll put some images in of things that I'm talking about. Um, the questions that I'm going to be answering and the questions that I'm going to be answering in this part, actually I don't need to show you a huge amount of things, but if I need to or reference, in, reference anything, I will put images in for you. And where possible, I'll link things down below um, if I need to. So let's get started. The other thing to say is I've written down names of people who asked me. Um, I'm just apologizing now if I um, say your name incorrectly, I'm really sorry. Um, I teach the early years, so quite often when I'm not sure how to pronounce something, I read it phonetically because I teach phonics to my lovely little ones. Um, so that's probably the approach that I'll have today when I'm trying to read your name. So I'm really sorry if I get not your name wrong. So first question is by Babra and it is, how did I first get into sewing and what was the initial incentive, incentive sorry, and am I self-taught? Um, so I got into sewing, I think it's about six years ago now, um, I'd wanted to get into sewing for years. My mum dabbled in sewing. She doesn't do a huge amount of sewing, um, but my mum sewed a few bits for us when we were growing up. She did a little bit of knitting, and it's something that I've always wanted to have a go at doing. Um, and then when the sewing bee came out, I absolutely loved watching the sewing bee, and I still love watching it now. I felt super inspired and motivated, um, and I asked for a sewing machine for my 30th birthday. So I, I really wanted to get into sewing about... that. Um, about 30 years ago, about eight years ago. Um, and I got the sewing machine for my birthday. It stayed in the box for two years, didn't touch it, gathering dust in the corner of my room. And then my husband threatened to sell it. He said, look, you haven't done anything with no it. point of it staying sat in the room, unopened in a box, let's sell it. And that was the kick up the bum that I really needed to be like, no, actually, I really am gonna learn to sew. So I was absolutely terrified about getting the machine out, threading it, I hadn't got a clue what I was doing. So I had to look for local sort of introduction to sewing classes where I live. I just wanted someone to show me how to turn the machine on, um, how to thread it, how to sort of just get going with sewing, how to understand sewing patterns, that sort of thing. So I signed up to a six week um, introduction to sewing, which basically was teaching us about all of the tools that you need for sewing, how to get going with your sewing machine, how to look after your sewing machine, and what the different stitches were, um, and how to read a pattern. I ended up only going to four out of the six classes because I ended up getting laryngitis and I was quite poorly for a while, so I missed two of the sessions. But the four weeks that I did attend was definitely just the kick up the bum that I needed and it really ignited this passion that I've now got for sewing. And I just blew from there. Um, I bought Tilly and the Buttons um, Love at First Stitch, I think it's called, book. And I've still got it with my books up here. Uh, I just dived in to sewing, absolutely immersed myself. I worked my way through the Tilly and the Buttons book. 
Then I bought some of her other patterns and this whole world of sewing was just opened up to me. And um, I think it was around the time Sew Me Sunshine started selling fabrics and I got onto Instagram and I followed them. And then once the whole world of fabrics, I mean, that's a whole other hobby in itself, but um, it just exploded with this excitement of sewing. So although I had sort of four weeks of um, sewing classes, they were quite short sewing classes and they really were just about using the sewing machine. I've been on a new craft house um, workshop to learn how to sew lingerie. So I went on a bra making workshop um, but that's it. The rest is completely self-taught and it's just by buying patterns and just having a go. That I think one of the first things that I sewed for myself was the By Hand London, I think it's the Victoria blazer. Um, and I look at it now, I've still got it in my wardrobe. I look at it now and it is, you know, so badly sewn, but I loved it. Absolutely loved it. It's a lined blazer. I might see if I can find it in my wardrobe and I'll show you. It's a lined blazer. Hadn't a clue what I was doing with lining it. Hadn't a clue what I was doing with finishing. Didn't have a clue about fitting. Um, but I decided, actually, I just wanted to have a go at sewing a blazer. So I did. Um, and I still wear it. And when I wear it, nobody ever comes up to me and says, Liz, that looks awful. Look how you finish the seams. That doesn't fit you properly. Um, I'm always reminded of the joy that I got from learning to sew. I'm going to see if I can find it so I can show you. I've got it. It's here. Um, actually looking at it, I didn't do too bad a job with attaching the lining sort of around there. Um, it was the sleeves. Look how bad the sleeves are there. Obviously didn't have a clue about what I was doing. Haven't finished any of the seams. I don't know if you can see there, but the seams are all like, uh, scraggly. Yeah. Um, I'll pop it on because I do still wear it. Um, you know, in terms of fit, it's not awful but the sleeves aren't fitted properly. Um, it's a, I can't remember if the pattern actually is a three, it must be uh, elbow length sleeves. Um, but yeah, that's what it looks like on. So I do still wear it. I don't know if I finished the front properly or anything. It's covered in paint now because I wear it to work. But um, yeah, this was one of the first things that I actually had a go at sewing up by myself. And I would say to anyone that's just starting out with sewing, just go for it. Um, you know, generally people don't spot the mistakes that you've made with your sewing um, and the joy that it brings when you have managed to make something on your own is just incredible. And I'll always keep this blazer, even though it's, you know, it's not made properly. Um, I didn't have a clue about fitting. I didn't have a clue about finishing seams and things. Um, but it just makes me smile and it reminds me of how far I've come in my sewing journey. And actually looking at it, the lining insertion isn't awful. It's mainly the sleeves and also the front. And if I look at the sleeve head, I've got a couple of puckers, but for my first time inserting sleeves, um, I'm really chuffed with that. So the, another part of that question that I haven't answered yet was what was the initial incentive, um, to learning to sew? So there's quite a few reasons for why I wanted to learn to sew. Um, before I could sew, I used to wear a lot of quite dark colours, so I'd wear blacks, navies, greys, no pattern. Um, my clothes didn't fit me very well because it was just shop bought, high street, and I find that I'm between a couple of sizes because um, I've got quite a large chest, I've got quite a small waist, and I've got quite small hips in comparison, so I just found that when I was buying things in the high street, They'd either fit me really well on top and then just um, be super baggy at the bottom and really not fit me. Or I'd, they'd fit me in the hips and fit me in the waist, but then be too tight on top. So I really wanted to um, learn to make clothes that would fit my body. I also wanted to inject some colour into my um, wardrobe as well. Um, and I'm also quite a natural introvert and I'm very, very shy in social situations where I don't know people. I get a lot of social anxiety. Um, I'm not very loud when I'm in public spaces. I'm not very loud and confident and chatty when I walk into rooms full of people either. I'm very self-conscious. Um, and I have found that my love of sewing and using bright colors and patterns and things has just really given me a confidence boost. Um, it's a great topic starter as well when I'm wearing something bright and colorful or something that I've made. Um, it's a great topic starter for saying, you know, when people say, where did you get that? And then I can talk about the fact that I made it and it just opens up this whole conversation around making your own clothes. 
I absolutely love sewing as well. It really sort of calms me and I love spending hours just getting stuck into a sewing project. Um, my life is quite busy, my work is really stressful, so I find having the hobby of sewing is that downtime for me as well, and I just find it really relaxing, and I just absolutely love it. And it's also opened up this like whole world of socialness, I don't know if that's a word, but of um, you know talking to other sewists on Instagram. I love doing my vlogs and sharing my love of sewing with everybody as well that watches them. So those are a few of my incentives for wanting to learn to sew. And now I'm hoping that my girls will also follow in my footsteps and learn to sew because it's such a brilliant skill to have. So when they show interest and they have done over the last sort of year and a bit, I've been helping them and sort of guiding them to follow patterns. So I hope that answered your question. The next question is by Andra Makes. What has surprised me the most about having a YouTube channel? So I think what surprised me the most is um, just how lovely and friendly everybody is, um, how interested people are in my sewing journey. I'm always amazed when people come back and watch my videos time and time again. Um, I've been really surprised by the sort of the community feel that you get on YouTube and how lovely everybody is. Um, all the other sewing vloggers, like I love watching sewing vlogs. I'll have them on in the background when I'm sewing. And there really is that community sense on YouTube, which is just wonderful. It's really surprised me how much I've enjoyed filming videos as well. Like I really love using them as almost an opportunity to share my love of sewing. And I use, especially my Sunday sewing catch-ups, they're almost like a, a roundup of what I've been doing across the week. And they also help me to plan as well. But yeah, the most surprising part has been that community element and just, you know, how wonderful it has been to connect with other sewists through um, YouTube. Uh, the next question is by Tammy Mason 2343 What is your sewing schedule? How do I fit in other aspects of life like baking and also family time? So my sewing schedule, I don't necessarily have a particular schedule that I stick to. I tend to use during the week when I'm working full time, I tend to use the evenings to either read a pattern, I might find a blog or, or a vlog on a pattern technique or a, a sewing technique, should I say, that I'm not too sure about. So I'll use it to almost do some research. I'll also use like Monday to Thursday as a time for sewing prep. So it might be that I clean my machine, oil my machine, I might change my needle, I might get the bobbin ready. Um, I might just simply cut out a pattern so that I've got things ready for later on in the week when I know that I've got a little bit of time to devote to sewing. I tend to, on a Friday, try and get a little bit of sewing in. I'm absolutely exhausted by a Friday, but I do try and do at least an hour of sewing on a Friday evening with a nice glass of wine. Uh, on a Saturday morning, if I don't have a market, I'll usually give myself a couple of hours to do sewing. And then on a Saturday evening, if I'm not going out with friends um, or I haven't got any cakes or anything to do, then I will spend the whole of Saturday evening doing some sewing. So my hobby is sewing. My husband's hobby is gaming. Um, and then Lola absolutely loves diamond painting. Um, I don't know if you've come across what diamond painting is, but it's absolutely amazing. She absolutely loves it. You use um, like these funny little tools. I'll put some pictures in of some of the diamond paintings that she's created and use these tiny little dots. And it's almost like paint by number, but you use these, what they're called little diamonds to create this amazing picture. She'll spend hours doing that. And she's actually right next to my sewing space. So she'll spend some time doing diamond painting and I'll spend some time sewing. Um, and then Ruby either loves to listen to music, she also loves gaming, or she'll uh, read a book. So we've all got our own little um, sort of hobbies. And I think it's really good that we recognise that we all need sort of downtime separate to each other, but we're all together at home. Um, so I'll tend to do quite a lot of my sewing on a Saturday evening. So once we've had dinner together, I'll go off and do some sewing. And I could sometimes sew for a good three, four hours on a Saturday evening. And then I'll also give myself a little bit of time on a Sunday, so a couple of hours. So that's how I kind of snatch my sewing time. If I've got a market, I'll be baking all evening on a Friday, and then the market's usually on a Saturday. So in that case, I'll give myself Saturday evening, and then I'll also give myself some time on a Sunday to sew as well. So that's how I manage to snatch 
um, sort of pockets of sewing time. Um, and then we will also fit our family time um, sort of in amongst that as well. And for us as a family, it's really important that we have dinner together. Um, we also like to listen to audiobooks. So quite often when we're having dinner, we'll listen to a book together as well. And sometimes we'll watch a film together as well. So I do kind of my sewing around what's going on with our family and also what's going on around baking. I don't tend to take on any cakes during the school term. Um, if I've got any cakes for people, it's usually friends and family, and that's usually in the holidays. And then the markets are only once a month. So it's usually only once a month when I'm up quite late on a Friday evening baking, and then we've got half a day on a Saturday where we're selling our cakes. But again, that's a family affair. Um, I do all of the baking, my husband and I do the markets together, and we really enjoy spending that time together as well. And then um, my girls will often pop along to the market come and get a cake they won't buy a cake obviously but they'll come and get a cake and then they'll get an ice cream from like the cafe on the corner um and it's just a really lovely community event to be part of and then there's another question specifically by tammy mason 2343 about my handmade wardrobe so tammy wants to know if everything i've made is in rotation are there things i don't wear anymore and why has my type of clothes I wear changed and have I always loved colourful prints? So talking about my style before I started sewing, um, I didn't like colourful prints. I wouldn't buy anything that was colourful or bright or patterned at all. It was all plains, plain navies, plain greys, plain blacks. But the sewing world has really opened my eye up to bright, colourful, um, just amazing fabrics, which bring me so much joy. I just absolutely love wearing all the things that I've sewn. In terms of everything that I've made, is it still in rotation? No, some of my old makes where I was still learning about fitting, I was still learning about um, finishing seams, that sort of thing, I don't wear them anymore. Um, I've either chopped them up and I've stuffed them into a closet core um, poof, or I've recycled the fabric. Um, there are things that I don't wear anymore that I made maybe three or four years ago, and this kind of ties in with the question of, has my type of clothes that I wear changed? Um, I made maybe probably about four years ago, I used to make quite tight fitted jersey tops, jersey dresses. As I've got older, I don't want to be wearing tight fitting garments anymore. Um, I've talked quite a lot on my channel that I suffer from IBS, so irritable bowel syndrome. I get bloated quite often, I get tummy aches, I get quite a lot of pain around my tummy area and that's quite often daily. So um, I want to feel really comfortable around my tummy area. Quite often I'll wear quite loose fitting garments for that reason or I'll make sure there's a little bit of give sort of in the trousers that I'm wearing as well. Um, I, I made a few of the Tilly and the Buttons Joni dresses um, a few years ago and I made quite a few of the Tilly and the Buttons Freya dresses. They're quite tight fitting dresses. The Joni dress is quite a low fitting dress as well. I feel like when I wear them, I'm quite exposed in the boob area. I don't wear those dresses anymore. I just don't feel comfortable having that area of my body exposed. Um, I don't wear quite tight fitted clothes anymore for lots of different reasons. Um, I don't feel comfortable in really tight fitted clothes. Um, there's a couple of garments that I made last summer I can't remember the name of the pattern. There was the Lola dress, which is quite a tight fitting dress. And then there was the True Bias, I can't remember the name of the pattern, but it was quite a tight fitting dress, quite a sort of um, slinky sort of feeling dress. And I just don't feel comfortable in that type of garment. So I've worn those dresses on holiday, but I wouldn't ever wear them just around my home, out and about in the local area either. So I would say my style has changed in the sense that I don't like being exposed in the bust area and I don't like feeling like I'm wearing quite fitted garments either. My body shape has changed as well. You know, I've been sewing for six years now um, and across that time, my children have started to grow up. Um, and my body shape, my body sort of has definitely changed. My size has changed as well. So there are some garments that don't fit me anymore. Um, Ruby and Lola absolutely love it when I'm going through my wardrobe and sort of pulling things out that I don't wear anymore. They'll quite often go through those garments and Lola has definitely picked up quite a few of my older tops that don't fit me anymore. And she really enjoys wearing them, which is great. And it gives me great joy seeing that she's wearing things that I've made as well. So there are things in my wardrobe that I don't wear anymore um, for lots of different reasons. So I hope that's answered your question. 
but most of the things that I've been making in the last, I would say two or three years, are still in rotation. Um, I'll wear them, you know, throughout the month. I try not to wear the same thing time and time again, because I have got quite a lot of garments in my wardrobe. But I've also, over the last couple of years, definitely enjoyed sewing for other people. Definitely um, for my husband and also for Ruby and Lola. And I started to sew for family um, and friends as well, which I absolutely love. I just love being able to sew. So it's great that I can sew for other people now as well. Um, Katie Crea, I hope I've said your name correctly, has asked, have I found a venue for the sewing club that I'm trying to set up? So I live in Isleworth, which is um, southwest London, I think. You'd think that I'd know that because I've lived here for 16, 17 years. But I live in Isleworth, which is sort of near Twickenham. So I'm trying to set up a sewing club um, that will happen a couple of times a month. So I'm looking for an evening and then also one day at the weekend. I'm thinking maybe a Sunday. I thought I found a venue, but that fell through. I've contacted a local church hall and I'm just waiting for them to get back to me to let me know what evenings are available. And then I've also contacted a couple of schools in the local area. Um, and I'm just waiting for them to get back to me. Um, I didn't realise how long it would take me to find a venue. Um, I have been really fussy with finding a venue. There are lots of things that I need this venue to have. And the main thing is for it to be accessible for everybody. Um, and I found that the trickiest, making sure that transport links are good, making sure that there's a car park if you want to drive, and then also making sure that it's accessible. So I am being really fussy with the venue, um, but I will continue to update you. Please, um, if you don't follow me on Instagram and you are interested in coming to the sewing club in Isleworth, it'll be Isleworth, Twickenham, Richmond, sort of Kingston, if you live in those areas or not too far away from those areas, I would say it's easy for you to get to. Um, or you might be interested in coming to the sewing club. Do follow me on Instagram. I'm at the baker that sews because that's probably where I'll update more regularly on how I'm getting on. But I'm getting there, um, and it is definitely something that I will be setting up. It's just been taking me a little bit longer than I was expecting to actually get it set up. So thank you for bearing with me with that. Um, and then Katie Korea has also asked, how would you finish the raw edges of jersey fabric without an overlock? So I'd say you don't need an overlocker. There's the zigzag stitch on your sewing machine, your regular sewing machine that you can use to finish the edges of woven, but also of jersey. You can also do French seams if you want to. They give a really beautiful finish on the inside of your garments. But I also find with jersey fabric, because it doesn't fray, you don't necessarily need to finish the seams on the inside of your garment. So just a regular mis machine stitch would be absolutely fine for your jersey fabric. And then Amanda Keynes 9253 has asked, would I ever go into baking full time? Um, I don't think I would. Um, I don't think the, I mean, I love baking, um, but I absolutely love teaching. If I ever went into baking full time, it would be later on in life. I mean, I do have dreams of my husband and I running like a little cafe that's kind of got sewing, but also like baking classes. And you know, I've just got an image in my, in my head of my husband sat drinking his cup of tea, doing the crossword, and I'm in the kitchen like baking and things. And we're just really enjoying selling our cakes and cups of tea and coffee to locals. Um, you know, that's a dream you know, that won't happen for a very, very, very long time. I'm talking like retirement age. Um, I'd love for that to happen. But in terms of giving up teaching, I don't think I ever would. I absolutely love being a teacher. It gives me so much joy. Um, I teach early years, they're four and five, and I absolutely love the magic of just watching them learn new skills, um, just watching them develop their little personalities, making friendships, and just the magic of the age. I absolutely love teaching, so I can't see myself giving up teaching anytime soon. Um, but yeah, my retirement dream would be to have a little cafe where I can bake all day long um, and yeah, just have lots of sort of regular customers that come in and have a little natter over a cup of tea and a, and a cupcake or a scone. Um, that would be really lovely. But once I finish teaching and I've retired with my lovely husband, um, I'm just going to spell this out because I don't quite know whether it's just a series of letters or whether it's a name. Um, P R D S J family three nine six has asked what 
what are your favourite fabric stores or online shopping? So I tend to buy most of my fabric online. There are so many fabric shops that I love buying fabric from. Uh, customer service is brilliant. The quality is always what they describe on their website. I don't have any fabric shops anywhere near me. We've got one in Kingston called Fabric Land. Um, they're okay fabrics, but they're not high quality fabrics and the price reflects that. So I'm just going to list off a few of my favourite online uh, fabric shops where I've, I've bought fabric from them quite regularly and I find the customer service fantastic. Sew Me Sunshine is my go-to fabric shop. Absolutely love Sew Me Sunshine. I love what Harriet's created there with her business. I love watching their YouTube videos and the fabric is always absolutely beautiful. Absolutely love First for Fabrics. I love watching their stories when Tamlin's sharing their fabrics. Their fabrics are always really fun, really good quality as well. Um, I love New Craft House. They've always got really interesting, beautiful fabrics um, that are dead stock. So I've bought quite a lot of their fabrics. I do find with New Craft House though, I buy their fabrics and then I get the fear of cutting into them because I know that I can't, usually you can't get them again. But I absolutely love theirs. And they've got bra making kits, which I absolutely love. And I love their haberdashery section on their website as well. Um, I also love, um, who haven't I said, Fabric Godmother. I absolutely love getting fabrics from them. Uh, Pound Fabrics, I've recently gotten into. They're really good value and I do find that their fabrics are um, really reasonably priced and really good quality. Rainbow Fabrics, I've bought a few things from. I do find with Rainbow Fabrics, absolutely love most of their fabrics, but I have found it's a bit hit and miss with the quality. So sometimes you'll get fabrics that are absolutely beautiful, really lovely to work with, and sometimes I've had fabrics that have perhaps not been what I thought that they were going to be. They've maybe been slightly lighter weight, and that is the danger of buying online. Most of the time I've found that the fabrics have been absolutely brilliant. I'm trying to think if there's anyone else. Like So Amazing, I absolutely love their fabrics. They've often got really fun fabrics and Felicity fabrics I absolutely love. Um, Avacan Fabrics, I'm an ambassador for and I love the range of not just fabrics but you can get loads of um, sort of knitting resources, quilting and haberdashery items on their website um, and Backstitch as well. I do write blogs for them but I also love the quality of their uh, fabrics that you get from them too. So those are just a snippet of some of my favourite online fabric shops. Um, like I said, there aren't really any fabric shops near me that I can go shopping um, and I don't tend to. There's John Lewis, but I don't find that they've got a great range of fabrics in John Lewis either. So I do tend to buy all of my fabrics online. Okay, next question. Natalie Stanchevsky, 4628. How did you get into baking and what made you start selling your yummy wares? So I got into baking 14 years ago when my first daughter was born, so when Ruby was born. And um, up until that point, I'd been a workaholic. I'd get into work super early. I'd stay there until the school doors were closing, so like six o'clock. I'd get home, eat my dinner, do more work. Um, and that was kind of my life. And then I had Ruby and I stopped working because uh, I went on to maternity leave. And I found that sudden break, although I was absolutely exhausted because I just had Ruby, that sudden break of busy, 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 busy doing work, all of a sudden stopping. And I've got this gorgeous little baby to care for. And I don't really know what to do with myself. I kind of felt like I lost my identity a little bit. And I think that's quite common when you're a new mum or a new parent. I was itching for something else to do that could give me a little bit of me back. And I hadn't really discovered sewing back then. You know, 14 years ago, I hadn't discovered sewing at all. Um, but I knew that I loved cooking. So I thought, I'm just going to dabble in baking. Um, and I just taught myself by working through recipes. Um, I think it was Ruby's christening, or maybe it was her first birthday. I decided to make cupcakes and a birthday cake. Her christening, I made her cake, it was absolutely awful. It tasted great, but it looked absolutely shocking. Um, and I just taught myself over time um, decorating just by watching YouTube videos, trial and error. Um, Lola came along and I continued to really enjoy baking and then I did baking with them. Um, and then it got to a point where I was really keen to try new recipes, really keen to practice decorating cakes and things, but there was only so much cake we could actually eat as a family. And then a local business was trying to set up a market in the local area. And I thought, why not? You know, I'll register as a business. 
let's go along, see if we can make something of this. And it gave me a platform to sell my cakes. Um, but it also gave me this community that I'm now part of, which I absolutely love. And my husband and I do the, the selling together. I do all the baking, but he comes along to the markets. He's actually known as the cake man because when my children were much younger, I'd go and set up at the market, but then I'd come home and care for them and he would do all the selling. Um, he would obviously say that I was the one that was doing the baking, but he became known as cake man in the local community. And it's only the last sort of one or two years where I've been able to go and join him because Ruby and Lola are old enough to be at home on their own now um, and he's still known as the cake man um, but that's kind of how I got into selling uh, my cakes because I had loads and loads of cakes at home and we just couldn't get through eating them I'd give them away to family and friends but I wanted to like really hone in on my skills and practice and practice and practice and try different recipes and being able to sell them just gave me that opportunity and like I said it's that real lovely community feel about selling my cakes as well and I really love it and it's something really great that my husband and I do together as well. <clears throat> um, Fiabet SCH4465 has asked how do you organise all your fabrics and patterns? So I have my fabrics in this unit behind me, I've got my patterns behind me here and then I've also got patterns here. So my PDFs are just in zip wallets or they're in um, these type of sort of card folders. I don't know if I can show you. Just like this with them printed and then the pattern on the other side. Um, I have also got another sort of cube unit that's got my patterns in and then I've got a couple more cube units that I've got the fabrics in and then I've got one box that's got all my fabric um, sort of scraps in. Um, probably about four or five months ago, I think it was maybe around Christmas time, um, my stash was kind of getting out of control, my fabrics were getting out of control and I didn't really have a way of organising them. I would just end up getting all my patterns out and going through them to try and find the one that I wanted or I'd know where certain patterns were but didn't know where other patterns were. I was forgetting what patterns I had as well. So I, I think it must have been around Christmas time, I have subscribed to the Stash Hub which is a brilliant app aimed at organising your fabrics and all aimed at organising your patterns as well. Um, and I pay for it, it's $3.49 a month. There is a free version where you can upload up to 20 patterns or fabrics. Um, I've uploaded, I've uploaded, I have subscribed to it, so it's £3.49 a month because that's unlimited uploads of fabrics and patterns. You can order them, um, you can plan your projects on there and I absolutely love using Stash Hub. I'll link it down below if you're not sure what it is, but it's a great way of organising your fabrics, organising your patterns, and then on there you can add your measurements, you can have people's measurements of anyone really, so I've got Ruby and Lola's measurements, my husband's measurements on there, and anyone that I've ever made things for, I've stored their measurements on there, and then you can also plan projects. So using the fabrics and the patterns that you've got stored on there, you can plan projects by connecting the pattern and the fabric and then also the person too. I absolutely love it. I haven't got all of my patterns on there yet because I've got so many patterns, but it's been a really great way of just seeing in one place what my fabrics are and also what my patterns are. Um, so that's how I organise my fabrics and also my patterns. Um, and then Julie Lockie 7570 has asked, what do I do with viscose and jersey scraps? Um, I absolutely love playing around with scraps. What I tend to do if they're big enough with my jersey scraps is I'll use them for knickers. So there's the free knicker pattern, the Megan Nielsen Acacia pants. That's my go-to knicker pattern. It's free. I absolutely love it. But then there's a couple of lingerie patterns out. So the new craft house have got a couple of knicker patterns. And then uh, Tilling the Buttons has got their um, knicker pattern. I can't remember the name of it. I think it's the EV knickers. Um, underwear is a fantastic way of using up jersey scraps. I've also just cut them up and used them to stuff things like a poof. Or I've used them to stuff things like a draft excluder. I've made a draft excluder for a couple of friends. Um, I've also had fun in the past using jersey scraps to make um, patchwork garments. 
So I made a patchwork, I think it was a patchwork pearl cardigan. If I've got a picture of me wearing it, I'll put it in now. I've also used the jersey scraps to make patchwork dresses and patchwork skirts as well. Um, there are so many things that you can do with offcuts of jersey. You can also use them to make uh, face wipes. You can also use them to make headbands. There's a really great tutorial by Julia Uzor to make a knotted headband using jersey offcuts too. You can use them to make scrunchies. Um, I mean, there's so many different things that you can do with scraps. So I hope that's given you a few ideas of what you can do. So that was question 10. I feel like I'm talking loads. So I hope this is interesting to you. I'm going to pause it there. And I think I'm actually, I said at the start, I'm going to do two parts, but actually I'm going to do three parts because I know this is already over 40 minutes long. Um, so there will be part two and there will also be part three. But I hope you've enjoyed um, hearing me answer the questions. Thank you for all of your questions. If you've enjoyed this video so far, do give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, do hit the subscribe button. You get notified of when I bring out part two and also part three. And then I also always bring out my Sunday sewing catch ups as well. Thank you for watching. Take care and I'll be back soon with another video. Bye.